Yeah. No chance of escape. Yes. Has it not been in your video yet? It's on now. Aha. This is like none of your uh, ordinary cribs here. <laughs> like you're on the other side. I just, no, no, is it? Yeah, I get it. I'll show you this. Is this? Oh, Zero. Getting off his personalised massage chair, probably for something to eat. That's all he does. Eat. Eat shit, sleep. But you know you're getting cribs and you go into the fridge and everything. I don't really want to show you that. The best thing in the fridge is down below. <laughs> this is the flugel draw. Let me keep all the little quick shots of alcohol. Alright. <laughs> So, when I was a kid, I always wanted to play snooker, and I, I got lost in uh, snooker lessons. And uh, I just couldn't get a house big enough to fit a snooker table, so, pool's the next best thing. From the screen, you know, you've got more controls over over each single channel. It's like channel 20. It's all centered around this the Mackie D8B digital um, mixing desk. That's what that screen is. These two are for Windows. It's all controlled by here. And the cockpit. It's a little controller keyboard just for some ideas. And I use the keyboard behind me for uh, you know actually playing stuff. Um, some of the main things in here are like the GP8080. Um, the Axis Virus C under there, um, the GP8000, some classic synths like the Jupiter 6, which I'm not sure is plugged in at the moment to be honest. Um, as you can see in the corner there's another load of relics, the Alpha Juno 2, the one lining up, that, that was my favourite keyboard, I think I've actually got four of those. Um, another classic one is the, the Roland TR909, I, I don't really know many people who still use those. Pretty much the reason why the studio is the size it is, it's been a collection of goodies that I've bought over, over time. And when everybody was selling off their gear uh, mid 90s, you know, and going totally digital, I was like, ah, shove it, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it as it is. And uh, yeah, I've ended up with a lot of stuff and a lot of space, but it's cool, you know, because I've got sounds, bomb if I want that, it's there, if I want that, it's there. And so, this is basically another, another one of these. So I've got a 24 channel digital here, I've got another 24 there. And then you can add all kinds of instruments to this, such as a, um, it's called a Uno 007, it's a Juno 106, it's just basically a copy. Come on, 
has really fallen about. Oh! <laughs> when I say fallen about, I mean it. Okay, SP1200, famous um, late 80s, early 90s uh, drum machine sampler. Uh, it was really big with um, rap artists, so those, those kind of guys. Huge, huge box. It had a horribly small memory, like 10 seconds long. Um, we had to cut up the sounds, but I've done so many tr uh, tracks on this, such as Hardcore Disco, Now Is The Time, Technophobia, the list goes on. Back in back in the early 90s, this was the box I did everything on. And there's, there's quite a good story with it, and the reason why it's buggered. Um, the, shop, <laughs> the shop that I got it from, I defaulted on a payment, and they came out to collect the sampler. And my mum let them in for tea, didn't she? So, uh, not only did they come in for tea, but the guys grabbed this and ran out of the house with it. So I've ended up chasing them up the street. And we're holding it and we're tugging them and tucking this, da, da, let it go, let it go. So the guy ended up giving it, you want your sampler, snatched it, smashed it off the ground. So, as you can see, it's very 80s. <laughs> but it works fine, I got a guy to fix it, fixed a few capacitors and it was fine. And then it was, before then I hadn't written much on it and after then I had to written most of my big tracks back in the day. The Jupiter 6 uh, was also one of my favourite keyboards. These, these are like 20 years old now. I mean the MIDI is very basic on them, <clears throat> which means basically if you want to change a sound, you know you have to do it manually, you actually have to stand up, whereas in a computer it's all automated. But this, this really changed my sound uh, a good time ago, um, mid 90s, gave me, gave me another grunge that I never had. Some of the keyboards up against the wall here, I think the Alpha Juno 2, these were, these were like gold dust at the time. They made the original Hoover sound, you know, like a Dominator. Wow, that's where they came from. I loved, I loved them, I bought like four, you know. And uh, over on this side, the TR909, yeah, it was one of my mates who actually sold me it, um, John Campbell from TTF, and I'm still amazed he sold me it, but yeah, I, I, I use it all the time, I always use live drums. And this little baby here, this is another big one that changed my, my life. The, GP8080, it's uh, it just sounds great, you know, the, the fat sounds out of it, and then um, this keyboard behind you, GP8000, it's actually the same thing, but it's, uh, you know, on a keyboard phone, but you can hear already, you can hear already how fat it is, you know, you don't need to mess around with those babies, yes. What I tend to do is I make notes, um, a little notepad on the thing because I never, for, I never remember what sounds. So it'll be like listed 8080, you know, 375. I know there is, a, there is a way to set it all up automatically, but I'm far too lazy for that. I just have to say another few boxes that really made the uh, things change. The MCR here is the the piano for Elysium, and the box under it, the Korg X3R, is the um, the kind of angelic little stabs that go around it. Those two boxes together work great. I could never sell them, you know, they're, I'd get 50 quid for them if I was lucky, but people don't realise that there are actually really good sounds in there. I still use them a lot, even though they're antiques by today's standards. <laughs> This is just a remix of Happy uh, Happy Vibes, a tune that was well, very big in the mid-90s in Holland and Scotland. Uh, Dave Devastate's also done a remix and uh, yeah, just doing my own flavour of it. Happen, something missing, you spend an hour finding it, and you find you get a, a channel muted or something. All the, uh, all the drums here, they're checking it out. Well, these, these are all actually straight out of the uh, 909. As you can see, there's um. It's been probably, probably a good part of my life in here. I've got a lot of CDs, uh, most of these are all demos that 
I'll work through eventually. I even still get sent tapes, which is quite funny. And uh, <laughs> and the floor is just CDs that I bought, you know, just fine stuff. It's a complete mess, but yeah. If there's any dust down there, just ignore it. Still to this day, record everything on the DAT. Um, you never know if the computer goes down, you've still got a tape copy of it. Record it on the computer, record it on the DAT. I mean, it's pretty much. It's, it's a bit obs uh, obsolete, ugly, <laughs> please, I was going to say. That's a bit obsolete these days, but it's still, uh, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. It's my theory, my saying on that one. But yeah, I'm in here every day of the week, pretty much, so. Not always working, but I spend most of my life here. I still can't find this sound. That's uh, the Mini Max, is another Moog. Um, I've got loads and loads of different ones, and these are really, really authentic, uh, old school sounding things. I mean, if you'd buy them in the hardware form, you'd be talking thousands. Hey! How predictable. But anyway, in theory, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it works like that. So it's a lot of the, the desk and the computer are both very tied in with each other, you know? In order to get the, the whole thing working sweetly. Control volume, I can control, control EQ from there. Ash was a funny one, the um, I'd bought the Army of Darkness and uh, there was a, a special edition came out and I was just watching it and uh, I think somebody, there, somebody, somebody else had actually used the sample before me but I was like, hmm, I'm going to mess around with that and it was a huge, huge clip, like three or four minutes long, I sampled it from the DVD and uh, yeah, <laughs> it became what it is now and I never thought anybody would like it, you know, I thought it would be too hard for the UK market and yeah, it's it's been one of the one of the biggest tunes in the, in recent time. So it kind of got me obsessed with the, with the Army of Darkness, which meant uh, which led to me buying this doll. I had to track him down for ages to find him, but he's quite good. He just sits up there with his chainsaw, making sure everything's okay. And a lot of the samples are actually taken from the film. So you'll hear if you sit in the middle, you hear a lot of panning left to right, like the oh and stuff. It's um. It's basically him falling out of the sky and stuff. I sampled all sorts of stuff that you don't think about. Ah, the screaming bit is him falling through the air and the pans left to right as, as it did in the movie. It's hard to say what influences tracks. You could be watching a movie and, and just something, uh, you'll hear something and you'll be like, hmm, start the video, you never know, I might get something interesting. Or you might be out and, and hear a track in the radio or just hear something random, and they'll be like, hmm, could take ideas from that. Other, other occasions you'll hear a hardcore track or something when you're out and you'll be like, hmm, like the idea of what they're doing with that, you know. I'm always working in new tracks. Most of the new stuff I, I do, I put straight online to um, evolutionrecords.net or something. A little flash player, people can get an idea of what's coming out. Um, obviously, this is coming out next. We're just putting a bit of time into this and working on tracks for this. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything particular that I should be mentioning, but yeah mostly just the same sort of stuff, we're just trying to get the sound, good good solid sound together. It's hard times in the record industry at the moment with the legal sales and um, illegal downloads, uh, vinyl sales are low so we, we're working towards um, a new mp3 store and hoping to spread out with that worldwide so we're, we're trying to get a good catalogue of stuff that we can get online and, and hopefully get the increase the market you know and get it into areas that we wouldn't normally have sold, that's the big thing we're working on at the moment.